Hey guys, just wanted to make a video to talk about a few things with my solar assistant. I've been using it for a little while now, and I thought I would just go over a couple of things that I've noticed with this unit. So first off, I had a question how to hook up the touch screen. It's very simple. All you need to do is plug in the USB and plug in the HDMI, and that's it. You'll be able to run your touch screen. So that's a simple thing. Uh, next, what I had done was I actually used a smart shunt from Victron to monitor my battery in and out. So as you can see, here's the smart shunt here, and then my fuzz bar is connected to it, and then my battery cable is here. Now what I had done to make the smart shunt uh, communicate with the solar assistant, I made a DIY cable. Uh, it's very simple to do, there's just three wires to follow. Uh, there's a couple of videos online. I know Off Grid Garage, he goes through the pinout on how to hook this up. But this is a non-isolating USB. So what happened was I actually shocked myself with my batteries. So the smart shunt is hooked up and the way that the power is powering the smart shunt is right here. This is a temperature sensor that runs to the smart shunt, which gives me an overall ambient temperature or the temperature of the buzz bar. Now this is a 600 amp buzz bar. I do not think that this is gonna heat up at all during normal usage, unless one of my crimps is bad on my battery cable, then it will heat up and get non-ambient temperature. Regardless, I was installing this temperature sensor and I was leaning up against the server rack case and my arm actually started to tingle and I felt I was getting shocked. So initially I kind of freaked out and I was questioning like, how is the metal case of the cabinet being electrified and my arm uh, holding onto the socket, tightening up this bolt and then leaning against the case, how is that shocking me? So immediately I grabbed my multimeter and I started poking around and I went from positive to case and I was getting the full voltage, like 55 volts or 56 volts at the time. And I was, what the, what's going on here? So. I had disconnected, I went through, I thought maybe it was coming through a battery. I was thinking maybe that the case of the battery was ground to the negative and bonded. So I went through all the batteries, couldn't figure it out. I ended up disconnecting all the batteries uh, and then checking with the continuity. So continuity is if you have a connection. So I went from the negative bar to the metal case, checked continuity and there was continuity from case to negative bar, which is not right. So I disconnected everything, disconnected the power supply for the solar assistant, and the only thing that was connected was this cable. And there is a negative uh, ground wire on this cable. I checked continuity, and then I pulled the cable out, checked continuity, and it was gone. So I was like, okay, it's the cable time to replace it. So the native cable for the Victron, the VE Direct cable that you buy from Victron, which is around $40, pretty expensive, is an isolated USB. So great, so I bought that, I installed it into the system, and then I wired everything back up, and I again was getting voltage from case to positive. Crap. So I went through again, and I checked everything, so I narrowed it down to the power supply running the solar assistant. So the solar assistant power supply is non-isolated. So it was going to case, but then I was thinking, well, how is it jumping from the negative to the case? There's nothing connected. So then I realized when I installed this touchscreen display, the mounting brackets I used is connected directly to the monitor and then connected to a bolt. And I had nothing isolating the metal of the screen to the metal of the case. So then I installed these grommets, which come right through and do not allow the screen to contact the metal. So as soon as I installed these grommets, that took that away. And moving forward, uh, anything I connect from the solar assistant into the case is gonna be isolated from the case itself. So another modification that I've also done to this case is one thing I realized was with the solar assistant inside of a metal enclosure with the door closed, uh, the Wi-Fi wasn't very reliable. 
it would connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect. So what I did was, well, I did a couple of things actually. On the Raspberry Pi itself, I installed a cooling fan just to try and keep the CPU a little bit cooler. And then I also wired out the Wi-Fi antenna. And again, I used a grommet so that this is isolated because from this metal to this metal would be negatively charged if I didn't isolate it. And then on the outside of the cabinet, I put a Wi-Fi antenna. So now the Wi-Fi is no longer connecting and disconnecting. For my USBs, I have just an Amazon basic powered USB hub which is I took apart the DC plug. So there's a plug that comes with it that's uh, DC or AC to DC uh, for power. And it is at five volts, I believe. Yeah, it's at five volts, which this Raspberry Pi runs off five volts, the power supply does. So I just connected up a splitter and I cut the uh, cord for the power for this USB hub and spliced it into a USB-C and put a splitter on it coming off of the power supply. So that allows me to power the Raspberry Pi as well as power the USB hub. And then uh, also for my fusing, so my power comes from this temperature sensor which runs up through this mini blade fuse. Now the fuse that powers the Victron Smart Shunt as well as powers the Raspberry Pi came with a glass fuse that I don't believe is rated for the voltage. So I had this left over from my golf cart, which as you can see on there, it says it's rated for 58 volts. So that mini fuse comes here and then the cable runs across, runs down, connects into the Victron and connects into the uh, negative bar here. So just so you know, um, when you do use the solar assistant, anything USB coming off of that, the casing around the USB is going to be negatively charged off your batteries because the power supply they give you is non-isolated. So just be aware if you're mounting like a screen like this, like I did, um, you need to isolate the screen from the rest of the cabinet if you're doing something like this or some other kind of uh, enclosure build. And also, uh, the antenna, if you put it, the Raspberry Pi in your enclosure, it's not going to reach out to the Wi-Fi. Um, outside of that, everything's been working flawlessly. I can connect to multiple inverters. I can connect to multiple batteries. Out of the batteries I have, two of them run on a certain configuration, and, and the Pites battery runs on Pylon Tech, so different configuration for the batteries. But yeah, everything's been running flawlessly, no complaints. Um, I did change up the... Uh, wire lug protection a little bit. So I'm gonna take this off and paint it black so it's kind of a little bit camouflaged. But I bought some of these on Amazon. They were on Current Connected, but being in Canada, it was a headache to get them. So I bought a pack of them on uh, Amazon. And that's for the negative terminal as well as the positive terminal. So now this looks a lot better um, as far as isolating the positive wire. So just a quick update video on a couple of the mods I've done here on the solar assistant and the battery server rack cabinet. And again, this server rack cabinet was used, bought it for like 250 bucks. Can't go wrong. I mean, it's got a nice door on it, so I can close everything up. I even went to a locksmith and got a lock uh, or a key cut for that lock. So I can lock the cabinet and I've got a full display here. So really, really cool. Uh, lights too, turn lights off. I have this on a smart uh, plug, so this here I can turn on and off with my cell phone if uh, I feel the temperature is getting warm in here, which I have not had to do. So yeah, just a quick video update on the server rack cabinet. Thanks for watching. Bye.